Welcome to a CyBreason video. In this video, we'll go over the CyBreason Nocturnus Research Team's recent Dead Ringer Threat Intelligence Report, which exposes Chinese threat actors targeting major telecommunication companies. This new research details the discovery of several previously unidentified attack campaigns targeting the telecommunications industry across Southeast Asia. In this video, we'll go over the key findings of the Dead Ringer Report including the attacker goals, the identified clusters of attack activity and likely attribution, the tools and tactics used, along with examples of how the threats are represented in the CyBreason platform. Following the discovery of suspected Chinese state-sponsored Hafnium attacks targeting Microsoft Exchange vulnerabilities, the CyBreason Nocturnus and Incident Response teams proactively hunted for various threat actors trying to leverage similar techniques. In the beginning of 2021, the CyBreason Nocturnus team investigated detected intrusions targeting the telecommunications industry across Southeast Asia. During the investigation, three clusters of attack activity were identified. Like with the Hafnium attacks, exploitation of vulnerabilities in unpatched Microsoft Exchange servers were central to these telcos attacks. The CyBreason team assessed that the goal behind the intrusions was to gain and maintain access to cellular providers for the purpose of collecting sensitive data about high-profile companies and their customers. Compromising assets such as the billing servers that contain call detail records, and accessing key network components such as the domain controllers, web servers, and Microsoft Exchange servers. These targets are likely to include corporations, political figures, government officials, law enforcement agencies, political activists, and dissident factions of interest to the Chinese government. Let's look at the three identified clusters of activity in more detail. The intrusions in cluster A go back to 2018. The attacks in this cluster involve the following tactics. Exploitation of Microsoft Exchange Several Vulnerabilities and installation of the China Chopper web shell to gain and maintain a foothold in the system. During the reconnaissance phase, the attackers used various built-in Windows tools, such as Net, Query, Who Am I, Tasklist, Hostname, and Ping, for internal and external connectivity checks, as shown here. Throughout the operation, the attackers used various tools and techniques to harvest credentials, including the well-known PowerShell Empire Invoke Mimikatz script, which you can see was detected and displayed in the CyBreason malware alerts screen. The attackers used different methods and tools to move laterally to different endpoints in the network, such as Cobalt Strike, WMI, and NetUse. For data exfiltration, the attackers again used the China Chopper web shell. Aside from the China Chopper web shell, the attackers relied heavily on a known backdoor named PC Share, which was previously reported as being mostly used by Chinese threat actors attacking Southeast Asian countries. Phase 2 saw a change in TTPs, with the addition of a tool called Local Group, which is useful for adding and enumerating users in a domain, along with the different Mimikatz executable. Phase 3 again saw a change in TTPs, with new tools including a script used for AD database dumping, DBT scan, dump event log tool, and again a new Mimikatz executable. Yet another Mimikatz executable was found in Phase 4. According to our analysis, Cluster A was executed by the SoftCell Activity Group, a group that is known to have attacked telcos in the past in multiple regions and believed to be operating on behalf of Chinese state interests. The activity in Cluster B was discovered in late 2020 and exhibited a different set of tools and techniques, including the rare nebulae backdoor to gain and maintain a foothold, and the previously undocumented enroll logger keylogger. Additional activities and tools seen in Cluster B include leverage of native Windows tools for reconnaissance, use of WMI and a renamed PA exec tool for lateral movement, and sysinternals procdump and mimikatz for credential theft. The CyBreason team suspects that the activity in this cluster was carried out by the Nacon APT group, a very active cyber espionage group previously attributed to the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Cluster C is the oldest among the clusters, with first signs of intrusions going back to 2017. Cluster C is characterized mainly by the deployment of a custom Outlook Web Access, or OWA, backdoor. The backdoor was used to harvest credentials of users logging into Microsoft OWA services, granting the attackers the ability to access the environment stealthily. 
Code analysis of this backdoor revealed similarities to previously documented backdoors that were used by Group 3390, also known as APT27, an infamous cyber espionage APT group operating on behalf of Chinese state interests. While each cluster appears to have its own unique characteristics, there are interesting overlaps, namely the targeting of the same victims, operation around similar time frames, and in some cases the existence of all three clusters on the same endpoints. Based on our understanding and past experience with Chinese threat actors, we developed several hypotheses that may explain those overlaps. One hypothesis is the clusters represent the work of two or more teams, with different sets of expertise all working together and reporting to the same Chinese threat actor. A second hypothesis is that there are two or more Chinese threat actors with different agendas that are aware of each other's work and potentially working in tandem. Another plausible hypothesis is that the clusters are not interconnected and that the threat actors are working independently with no collaboration. One thing that remains consistent and evident in all three clusters is that they all point to threat actors that are believed to be operating on behalf of Chinese state interests. It is also not surprising that the telcos targeted in these intrusions are located in Southeast Asian countries, some of which have long-term publicly known disputes with the People's Republic of China. That being said, attribution is not an exact science. Our researchers continually reassess attacks over time as new information emerges that may shed light on the identity of threat actors. Thanks for watching. For an in-depth look at the research that went into these findings, as well as details on tools, tactics, and techniques used in these attacks, read our Dead Ringer blog at cybreason.com/blog.